What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to jailbreak the iPhone and iPod Touch on the 3.1 firmware. Now before we get started there are some things I want to go over and you make sure you listen carefully uh, because in my last video that I did on Mac, uh, the Mac jailbreak for 3.1, a lot of people were like blah 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 blah, it's not for Windows, it's not for Windows, and that it was. Uh, so just listen to what I'm saying here, okay? Alright, first off, this does not work with the iPod Touch third generation. I said second there. How do you know if you have the iPod Touch third generation? Um, if you bought your iPod Touch after September 9th, I think it was, um, then it is a third generation. So if you bought the 32 gigabyte or the 64 gigabyte iPod Touch after September 9th, then you have a second gener or third generation. But if you bought the 8 gigabyte iPod Touch after um, September 9th, you're sure, I'm pretty sure you're fine, I'm pretty sure that's not third generation iPod Touch. You guys can correct me on that, but they never really came out and said specifically about that. So this does cover the iPod Touch 2G, and this does cover the iPhone 3GS. Um, but what you're going to have to do with this, it is kind of tricky, um, and if this is not going to work out for you, I'd recommend you just waiting until Red Snow comes out. If you have an iPhone 3GS, or an iPod Touch second generation, you are going to have to be already jailbroken on 3.0 or pwned, as they call it. Um, you need to be pwned on the 3.0 firmware before you update to 3.1. So you're going to have to do this from a pwned 3.0 firmware. Um, if you're already updated to 3.1 and you haven't jailbroken yet, do not do this video. Do not waste your time with this. Wait till Red Snow comes out because that would require downgrading and then upgrading. Uh, so don't do all, well, actually it would, require, it would require downgrading, pwning, upgrading, it's just too much stuff. So wait for Red Snow to come out, that's basically what I'm going to tell you guys. If this doesn't work out for you, wait for Red Snow, I will have a guide on that. That'll be for Windows and Mac, as well as this guide is for Windows and Mac. You can do it on either one. And another thing I want to mention, sorry I'm having to talk a lot, but I want to make sure everybody gets everything straight. Um, a lot of people I did a guide on, like just similar to this. Um, with the firmwares. If you have um, any problems restoring to the firmwares, I'm going to show you about and talk, talk about and show you in just a minute, uh, getting 1600 errors, then what I'm going to recommend you do is wait for Red Snow. If you have any of the errors um, with the 1600 errors or anything like that in iTunes, what I'm going to recommend you do, wait for Red Snow. Uh, if you have any problems where your device is messed up or anything like that, just hold the home and power button in for about 20 seconds and then it'll reboot and you'll be fine. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, basically, it's a pretty easy process. Uh, what you're going to need to do, download the correct firmware for your device. These are pwned firmwares. Okay, what you're going to need to do, download them from the right in the video description. I'll have all the links over there that you, need to get, uh, that you need to get the firmwares. Make sure you're downloading the correct one for your device. Download the firmware. Open iTunes. Make sure you save the firmware to your desktop so it's easy to locate. Um, if you're on Mac, what you're going to do, or first have your iPhone or iPod Touch plugged up to your computer, put it in DFU mode, which I will show you now. So this is how you go into DFU mode. I do want to mention before I explain to you how to do this, if you have the iPhone 3GS uh, or the iPod Touch 2G, you're already pwned, you may not need, need to go into DFU mode. I'm not 100% sure about that. If you have problems, I did tell you, hold the home and power button in about 20 seconds, your phone will reboot, and then you can try the process all over again. Um, and then you can try it without DFU mode if the first time it doesn't work and gives you 1600 errors. So this is how you go into DFU mode. I'm using Ponage Tool to give you a better understanding of how you do it if you have no clue how to do this. Um, but just to note, you do not need Ponage Tool. That's just in the background to help you out. So basically, we've got my device plugged up and this is going to tell us what to do. Um, you do not need this again. Uh, it says first off, we got to turn off our device. So I'm doing that now. Alright, turning it off. Give it a second. Alright. Prepare to hold the home and power button in five seconds. Okay, we're pressing home and power button. Now we're going to release the power button and keep holding the home button. Okay. I could never release the home button. And then basically, that's about it, and we'll be in DFU mode. You'll see iTunes pop up in just a second. Okay, we are in DFU mode. iTunes pops up. If it gives you an error, I'm pretty sure it's going to give me this error. Okay, all you got to do, if iTunes pops up, gives you that error, unplug it, and plug it right back up, and then it will recognize it in DFU mode. Your screen should be black. If it's not black, you didn't do it right. So that's about it. 
Now remember, if there is any problems with restoring when you did it in DFU mode, like 1600 errors or something like that, try restoring normally from wherever you're at um, to the firmware that you downloaded. And then you've got it in DFU mode, you've got it plugged up to your computer, and you've got iTunes open. You're going to hit the shift key or option key if you're on a Mac. You're going to hold it in, and you're going to click the restore button. What is <clears throat> what it's going to do is open up another window uh, and basically all you're going to need to do is select the custom firmware that you downloaded let it restore you'll have a jailbroken iPhone or iPod touch and that's basically it so hopefully you guys enjoyed this hopefully it helps you out if you have any like if you don't want to do this if you don't think it's safe which is really not uh, I mean it is safe but a lot of people had problems with this way uh, so I'm, what I'm going to recommend is you guys just wait for Red Snow if you really really are anxious to do this you can it's on you if you do it though uh, so do it at your own risk but it's easily fixable just by holding the home and power button so hopefully this video wasn't too long and hopefully I got my point across and you understand everything but I really do recommend waiting for, for Red Snow because it will cover all devices including the iPod Touch 3G and there will be no issues with 1600 errors or anything like that and remember make sure you read the notes in the video description because if there's anything going wrong I will update the notes in the description of the video to cover everything uh, in case like because a lot of stuff a lot of times people leave comments and not like if I forget to mention something in the video um, I'll update the notes in the video so check the description I'm getting choked up I've been drinking tea so anyways thanks for watching guys hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully it helps you out um, please rate five stars favorite subscribe do all that thing leave me some comments let me know how this worked for you how it didn't work for you let me know i'll see you guys in the next video check out my other channel subscribe to them links over there in the description and follow me on twitter and i'll see you guys in the next video please stay tuned for my redstone video that will cover mac and pc bye